Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Stephanie Eccles. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? Doing pretty swell. I am. Uh, I'm super excited to have you here today. Oh, wow. All right. We're coming straight out of the gate with a <laughs> sub. Thank you, Luke, for the sub. Uh, yeah. So, so Stephanie, we're doing some really exciting stuff today, but before we talk about that, I want to talk about how exciting it is to have you on the show. So, so for folks who are not familiar with you and your work, do you want to give us a little bit of a background? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, CSS is sort of something I seem to have made my umbrella, um, <laughs> over the past about year and a half. Um, I'm the author of modern CSS.dev, um, I'm also a full-time software engineer uh, at Microsoft, but CSS is something I've really found myself enjoying educating about, um, you know, whether that's articles or videos through Egghead or workshops. So um, that's what I'm mostly talking about these days. My other favorite thing is 11D. So um, if you're interested in either of those topics, I'd love to chat. <laughs> All right, I'm throwing some throwing some links into the chat for y'all <laughs> to modernCSS.dev and 11D. Go and check those out. Um, okay, cool. So, so today we are specifically focusing on CSS and not just CSS, but the new things in CSS. Um, you know what I just realized? Something is missing. What is it? It's that I forgot to turn on my background lights. Everybody wait. Watch, you're going to see how the magic happens. <laughs> Got to get the vibe right. Come on, Jason. <laughs> look, look at it. <laughs> oh, there we go. See, doesn't this feel better, everyone? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so now that we got the vibe right, um, so we're we're talking about some new features in CSS, and so here's something that I have learned about myself. I just really prefer writing CSS to any of the other approaches that I've seen. Like I have, I I picked up um, what were they? It was like glamorous i picked up stylus i picked up sass and less i picked up uh emotion i've tried tailwind and none of them to me feel as good as just writing straight up css because it always feels like i'm one it like when i use those other solutions i always feel like i'm kind of one step away from from the thing that i'm trying to do and that always makes me feel like disconnected from it right and so I am uh, I'm a, a huge CSS proponent. I think that one of the biggest superpowers we can pick up as web devs is to actually learn and embrace CSS as a language and not try to find ways to engineer around it. Um, sounds like you are also uh, a kindred spirit in that regard. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's super refreshing to hear you say that. And I, I mean, I came in knowing, you know, very well that you I certainly have CSS chops yourself, which is awesome. And um, and I'm looking forward to definitely revealing some of the new stuff that hopefully will get the rest of the folks that are watching this now or later Absolutely. excited and feeling sort of the same way because we are getting stuff in regular CSS, if you will, vanilla CSS, whatever you want to call it, uh, that will ease some pains and, and you know, were formally reasons why this other tooling had been developed. Absolutely. Okay, and because we're going into something that can be a contentious topic of CSS, chat, I want to remind you all very clearly, we do not trash other libraries here, all right? We can have preferences, we can have opinions, but our opinion cannot be X is trash, okay? The, every tool is good for its use case, and every tool has a set of users that vastly benefit from it. So we're talking about preferences. These are not objective facts. Do not trash things in the chat. I will kick you out. Thank you. <laughs> well said. <laughs> so, uh, so with that out of the way, I am super excited to hear what's new in CSS because, as somebody who likes CSS, I am also very okay. This is these are two very separate statements. I am someone who likes CSS. Unrelated to that, I am someone who is scared of change, <laughs> <laughs> and so. I absolutely never try the bleeding edge stuff. I always wait until somebody else has done the work to test it and work mm -hmm. the kinks out and then bring it. So I don't even know what's coming. So I'd love to hear maybe just a, a quick overview of, of what you've got in mind for today. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and I can sympathize with what you were just saying. And I know certainly that your usual audience is used to JavaScript and definitely a standout difference for me. Um, and, you know, what the kind of the root of a lot of frustration people have with CSS is that part where they can't use the new stuff right away because mm-hmm. we have to actually wait for browsers to catch up. Sometimes we can polyfill it. Sometimes, you know, there's a fallback. Um, I personally advocate for using that new stuff as progressive enhancements. And we'll talk about that a little bit in our mm-hmm. example today. Um, you know, there's not something like Babel, you know, that the trans piles it like JavaScript. So totally understand the frustration and um, hear everyone who who shares that experience. Um, but I'm hoping, yeah, we can kind of work through that. And, you know, uh, everything we do today is going to be available in your evergreen browsers. Mm-hmm. And the slight differences we can accomplish um, patches for in a few extra lines of code, not much. Nothing is going to be painful, I promise. <laughs> I am I am excited. So, um so let's talk a little bit about kind of what the the benefits of some of these things are. So so one of the ones that you uh, that you called out by name is container queries. Yep. So can we talk a little bit about what those are? Yeah, absolutely. So that's definitely the one that's getting kind of the most hype lately, and the reason is that of the um, upcoming things, that one is. Uh, actually supported in, or beginning to get support, I should say. It Mm. is behind a flag in Chrome Canary, which means it's one of the furthest ahead on the standards track, uh, as it it were. Um, So um, the idea of container queries is that instead of our traditional media queries, which watch the viewport, container queries allow you to watch a individual element and affect its children. So as its context changes, um, you can do the same kinds of things we're used to with media queries, but related to that element. So instead of orchestrating the whole page, you're now only worried about your single scoped component and things like font size, changing orientation, Mm -hmm. grid areas, um, background colors, literally any property that you have access to CSS, you you can do it in a container query. You're just changing that scope, like I said, from viewport down to the element level. So we'll do one example that's going to be kind of towards our the end of our demo today because we got to build up to that point. Sure, sure. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, yeah, I'm really excited. And and so I have a million questions, but it might be easier to talk about these when we can kind of move yeah. things around the screen, right? So why don't we just enough talking? Let's build some stuff. <laughs> Here we go. Let's go over to uh, to pair programming mode, and I'm gonna start first and foremost by giving a shout out to uh, our captioner. We've got Amanda with us today from White Coat Captioning. Thank you so much, Amanda, for being here. Uh, that is right on the home page of Learn with Jason. You can find the live transcript. So just go ahead over there if you want to follow along. That is made possible through the support of our sponsors. We've got Netlify, Fauna, Hasura and Auth0 all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people, which means a lot to me. While you're clicking on things on the internet, make sure you go ahead and follow Steph on Twitter uh, with that just great leet username. That is a, that's a wonderful one. Um, and we talked a little bit about modern CSS.dev. I dropped a link, but let me drop it again. There you go. And Elevendy, which uh, are we using Elevendy today? We are. We're not going to talk about it much, but we are using it. (laughs) All right. Okay. So all that being said, what is the first thing that I should do now that I'm, I'm ready to start writing some modern CSS? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a starter repo. Uh, It's currently private. It'll be available after stream today. Um, Yep. And see if you want to go ahead and clone that down. Okay, so we'll I did that ahead of time just it. in case we needed it. So let's uh, let's poke this thing open here. So this is just an extremely lightweight starting point using Eleven D. The reason we're using Eleven D is because it already includes some nice creature comforts like browser sync. So, and because we are just building a static site today. Mm-hmm. So, um, so we don't need to care about anything but this, right? That's right. Yep. So um, this is a clone of my 11D SAS skeleton. So we do have SAS processing available. We're not going to like do anything extremely fancy with SAS. Um, I am going to ask you to create individual files and that's just going to help us keep organized as we build out our styles today. 
Wait, what happened? <laughs> and here NPM comes Watch eleven. <laughs> oh, I need to actually install all the dependencies. Oh, yep. <laughs> Normal like, install. This, what is? It? What do you mean it's missing? <laughs> I've seen you eleven. You exist. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Here we go. Let's uh, let's pop this thing open. And yeah, you want to open things up. Okay. And so uh, important point here. We are using Chrome Canary today because we had to uh, enable that container for queries flag. So for folks who have never seen this before, um, do you want to talk us through like kind of what's happening here? Because this is actually yeah, the first absolutely. time I've ever enabled the flag. Absolutely. So um, strictly for the portion on container queries, we are using Chrome Canary. Again, that's the only place it's available at current. Um, and so you'll go to that Chrome colon slash slash flags, you search for container. And then as you can see at the top adjacent list there, we have pre-enabled it. And the reason we already did that was it required a relaunch um, to make sure it's working for us. So that will be all ready when we get to that point. Okay. So now we have this uh, this, we this have <laughs> very straightforward locally running site that uh, has, I believe, all the things we need. Let's Yes, I was going to ask that. you that. That's Hot perfect. reload, there it goes. Yes, and it and that LWJ is throwing LWJ it. Is yeah, it was Arabic. doing that to me too. <laughs> uh, can I tell it not to do this? Not. Oh, uh, you can change the text. Let's just change the like actual text. Let's to say just hello page is not in Arabic. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> it shouldn't just do that. The rest of the demo after site. we stop uh... it. Never translate this site. Go away. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna start out, uh, take some baby steps to get us going, and kind of understand what's what, how this project is working, and then we're gonna go all in. Um, anybody that caught my tweets this morning, I sent out a sneak peek of where we're headed. We're going to build up a dashboard page. Um, it's gonna give us the opportunity to cover a lot of modern CSS features, um, and be ready for you to hook in some sort of real database and JavaScript stuff to actually make the data part work. So that's our plan today. I see <laughs> like the chat the, uh... has discovered the beard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Perfect. So the first thing I'm going to have you do, you're already in your HTML. That's perfect. Um, for folks wondering why we're only seeing an H1 in the chat, this is because I have the 11 starter set up so that it is using what 11 calls a layout. And that's where we've tucked away our, yep, there you go. That's where we've tucked away like the boilerplate stuff. Um, you can see, yep, that's what's outputting our content. So uh, just kind of helps us focus in on what we're worried about for today. All right, so what I'd like you to do as a starting point is um, we want to add a little bit of semantics here to <laughs> get us going. So if you wouldn't mind wrapping that H1 in a main tag and going ahead and giving that a class of container. So we're going to kick this off with one of my absolute favorite like introductory modern CSS features, okay. uh, something that you can use right now and um, you'll love it. <laughs> so in our, yep, go ahead and go to our style file. And if you would go ahead and create our first um, additional file a um, within the SAS directory, if you would create underscore layout. For those not familiar with SAS, underscore tells SAS processor not to compile that as a separate style sheet. Oh, okay. And again, we're just going to use this as organization today. Um, so don't be overwhelmed with SAS. Nothing we're actually writing with CSS is like proprietary SAS stuff. How so do important I do this? Yeah. So at the top of the file. Top of the file. Um, yep. It has to be at the top uh, just due to the <laughs> rules of SAS. <laughs> You're going to do an at use. And then within parentheses layout, you don't need the underscore. Uh, print or excuse me. I don't know why I said parentheses. I'm in JavaScript land apparently uh, <laughs> within quotes. <laughs> Oh, like this? Yes, correct. Okay. And a semicolon. Okay. Perfect. And so now if I go back into this one and I do, we created that container class and I do like a border one pick solid red, which is my favorite way to debug anything, um, that should be working, but it didn't. Do I need to restart 11D to get it to pick up the change? Let's see. How did you, it, it should have 
yes, <laughs> it should quote unquote just work. Um, did you get an error when we did a, the install? All it's installing is 11D and then um, uh, SAS, the main SAS library. File changed, did the thing. File changed. Maybe I need to. Of course, of course, we're going to hit a bug at the first step. <laughs> um, what's a comment in SAS? Does it? Let's do a rerun just of 11D. Just so I with the npm start, um, just to make sure. Okay. It's also possible that I typoed this. So let me just really quickly double check container, and then I go out here, container. Okay, I did that part. So let's stop and restart it. Yeah, because I'm also not seeing the other. Um, like the base style sheet applied since that's a serif font. So that was a Oh, was... interesting. I wonder if if something <laughs> is going more wrong here. CSS style.css. Let's make sure that exists in your public directory. Oh, you know what I bet it is? I'm running Netlify dev and I bet oh, that it's mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, Hold on. Yeah, just we can start. figure this out. Yeah, just use the start command probably. That's why it's yeah. I'm I was running a shortcut and it didn't know to use your your command. So that's uh that's on me. <laughs> so it should be 8080 instead of yeah. Okay, here we go. I have done that as well. Ta-da. Perfect. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. You know what? I'll have you actually leave on the outline or the border. I was okay. actually going to have you add an outline so we could see what's happening. Oh, so an that's outline. Perfect. That's also a good call. Because <laughs> an outline would give us the um, outlines don't occupy any space, right? So it doesn't change the layout at all. Right. It does not add to the computed dimensions of our element, similar to box shadows. Cool. So... All right, so let's actually make this do something more exciting than have yeah, a border. We're probably it. losing people. <laughs> 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 Classic debugging, you know, had to happen there. Um, all right, so if you would go ahead and add a width property to our container. Okay. And now normally you would probably set this up to something sort of precise or percentages or something like that. Instead, so here's our first little nugget we are going to use the min function. So you're going to type min, and then this time you really are going to type, yes, parentheses. <laughs> and so the min function, there's also max. Um, you can give it an array of values. You can actually give it more than two. And um, we're going to give it two. Okay. And based on the computed size of the width of the element, um, it's going to select uh, the minimum value. So it will change as the component changes size in this case. And so, so our, like in a in a silly comparison here, if yeah. we do this as 100 pixels, 300 pixels, the computed size is going to be 100, right? So if we go correct. in here and look at computed, you can see that it's 100. Now, this is not particularly useful because we can immediately <laughs> determine that, but there are like... When's the case that this is useful? Or I guess I should just let you continue with the example instead of jumping ahead of you. Yeah, so our goal is to, um, so what's a little bit confusing is that we typically use the min function to actually set a maximum allowed value. Mm. Um, and so let's see what that means. So the first value we're going to pass it is 100 CH. CH is the character unit, and it's going to be roughly equivalent to the width of the zero character in your computed font size at that point. Okay. So since this is, um, you know, at the root of our element, it's going to compute back up to the root unit, which is going to be one rim as a default or 16 pixels. <laughs> So um, the second value we're going to pass, so that's going to essentially make it a max width of 100 CH. Mm -hmm. And then as our component shrinks down, we want to make sure we don't have overflow. So we are going to do 100% minus 2 rem. Do I need to wrap that in a calc or anything? Nope. We can do math directly within min, max, and clamp. No way. CSS function. Yes. Okay. So here, here's the the 100 characters, mm -hmm. but as I make it smaller, it won't go over 100% minus 2 rem. Correct. That is awesome. 
So to finish off our container class, typically typical behavior we want for this is for it to be centered. So I'm going to introduce one other modern CSS thing for you here. We're going to use logical properties. So instead of setting margin left and right, I'm going to have you set margin dash inline. And I know a few weeks ago, um, this was briefly brought up when for the discussion of right to left languages. I'll tell that you what, I, I was so <laughs> overwhelmed by that right to left episode that I this this part didn't even try to stick in my brain. It just <laughs> fell right out the other fair. ear. <laughs> Completely fair. So the idea of logical properties, the super like five second overview is that they will intelligently, based on the browser heuristics um, and whether right to left or left to right languages are set, they will essentially flip orientation, for example. Um, so we've got inline, inline start, block, block start, et cetera. So block is going to be your traditional uh, top and bottom and inline is going to be your traditional left and right. And and um, so what what this is doing is instead of using like a highly specific language of left and right and top and bottom, we're saying like inline are whatever would be considered the like space between characters in the flow. And block would be like the the spacing between blocks of text, which we think of as like the top and bottom. But Correct. if we, so does that mean that if we change like the direct, if we use display flex and change the direction column, inline would be top and bottom now? Um, if you also changed the language orientation. Oh, okay. So, so it's only language orientation. Grid. Yeah. Everybody's cool subscribing. About... Oh, yeah. oh, we got a gift. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you all very much. So Todd, thank you for the sub. Heavy B, thank you for the sub. Peruvian Idol, thank you so much for gifting all of those subs. Uh, y'all should now have a <laughs> huge amount of boop potential. Did I see somewhere that the boops aren't working? Do I need to, to reload something? I also saw a question in the chat from Red Hat Ranger. Am I the front end masters guy? <laughs> I am one of the front end. Ma I, I have taught front end masters. <laughs> um, ben, oh my goodness, here we go. <laughs> we, are, we are all over the place. We just hit level three on the, oh, Todd, Todd, what is happening? Oh my gosh, everybody, thank you so much for <laughs> all of these sub gifts. You are all the best. Uh, Thank make you sure you, uh, you spam the heck out of that boop now that you got one. <laughs> it looks like the Wonderful. boops did, the boops did break. So let's, uh, let's reload, let's reload the overlay so that everybody oh, can, yeah. can do those boops. Wouldn't want to miss the boops. There they are. All right. Try some boops, y'all. Try some boops. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> oh my goodness. So many subs all at once. I appreciate you all. Thank you all very much. Um, okay, now everybody settle down. We're trying to learn CSS. <laughs> yes, and if you join more recently, I promise we're gonna do something way cooler than just outline a box and size it. So stick with us. <laughs> we're just getting our feet wet here. <laughs> we're also, I think this might be the closest I've ever been to actually completing a hype train. The only time that I've completed a hype train is when we did it on Cassidy's chat. Oh, B1 Mind, thank you for the sub, appreciate it. Oh geez, okay, so what Running does that mean? 17% for B1 Mind <laughs> subbing? That means that we need, what, four more subs, five more subs to hit the level five? I think that's it. Ooh. Who wants who wants to be the who wants to be the one? Finish the hype train. Um <laughs> D Dingle Weenie, what a name. <laughs> Ayers can't be choosers, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, all right, all right. Let's uh, let's 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 keep going here. So we're we're at margin all right, inline. All right. Let's go. Yes, <laughs> we got a oh lot goodness, to get through. We in an got hour. more coming in. Thank you, Good Todd. Lord. <laughs> oh boy, what a great what a great show. This is a great show. <laughs> Ta oh, and then Taylor's out here gifting. Thank you all so much, Todd. I think you just set the record for most gifted subs in uh, in a show. So thank you very much for that. And we are now at 173% of the hype train. And I think we'll never be free of this noise ever again. No. Thank you all no. so, so much. <laughs> oh my goodness, we're still we're still going. Holy crap. Y'all are amazing. But I would like to show you some CSS. <laughs> I really I know. Jeez. Okay, I'm actually I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna just I'm gonna turn off the Streamlabs thing because it's so noisy. Thank you all so so much for the subs. I appreciate you. Uh, you are the best. Let's, let's, yes. let's get back to some CSS. <laughs>
Okay. Okay. So I wanted to real quick mention, um, oh, I guess we need to finish this rule. Let's do that. Margin inline. So you're just going to say auto and that's going to set both our left and right. Excellent. My so life just got happen. so much easier. Yeah. So, okay. So one thing about logical properties is there's a little discrepancy right at this very moment um, between their support. The okay. good news is that um, two things. There's a post CSS plugin, which I actually have as part of this package. So once we do like the final build, what it's going to do, it's going to find margin in line. It's going to know based on our browsers list that we would like to like backfill that. Oh, okay. um, the holdout right now is Safari. Once Safari 15 drops, I'm fairly sure I could look this up. Uh, it should This should be across our evergreen browsers. Um, of course, that'll take a little bit of time to roll out and so forth. We all know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the post CSS will change this, for example, to uh, margin left auto, margin right auto. So in other gotcha. words, you can write this now and have it do that processing after. It's just going to add two more properties. Um, and so, you know, this is another thing where we can use it as a progressive enhancement, um, makes our writing a little bit easier. And it's a good habit to start getting into so that we can, this is like a small thing we can do to future proof um, what we're building. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> so um, let's do something more exciting. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention in terms of support, um, I would highly recommend the VS Code extension web hint. And it's going to look at your browsers list and give you a little extra squiggly line um, and let you know when it identifies stuff that may not be supported based on your what you've said you would like to support through your browsers list. Nice. Okay. Got it. Might require it. restart, but it will throw a yellow squiggly on that margin inline. Um, okay. Let's uh, let's reload. Let's do it. I'm I'm reopening. heck is code meter i don't even know i've i've now installed so much crap that i have literally no yeah. idea what's going on Let's see that one goes away and we'll keep this one and extensions have been modified yeah i know <laughs> uh let's not do copilot today oh my goodness we we got the level five hype train emote and it's a corgi doodle did oh, y'all did y'all get this one? Because that is a that is a good one. <laughs> oh, that's a that is a really good one. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> All um, right, we can we can ignore it for now. I just wanted yeah. to mention it that it's really helpful um, as you are using CSS properties. I'm not. I think it works with some other you know like non vanilla, <laughs> but I have not personally tested that. Um, it's made by some folks from the Edge team and some other collaborators believe it's open source and it's actually used in edge browser um you'll see and a new a newer pane that was added recently it'll tell you similar things nice but anyway just want to make sure we're covering our support basis since that's a big question that comes up when we're talking about this topic yeah okay let's do something more exciting um so while we're still on our container we want to make this a little more flexible okay and so we're going to start to introduce some custom properties so at the top of our container rule, we're going to do three of them. And uh, the first one's going to be container dash width. Um, so dash dash to start indicating our custom property. So, oh, custom pro. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. I um, I forget that that's the official name. I always call them CSS variables because that's yeah. That's the world I live in now. I guess. Yes, I try to usually say both, um, but I've trained myself to do the other, and so my apologies. Yes. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> um, so we're going to set that as our default of 100 CH. And then you can go ahead and swap that out in our width rule. So you'll do var, the var function, and then the full name. Yep. Yes, code's very helpful there. Very um, helpful. The second one, second custom property, we're going to call container gutter. Um, yep. And we're going to set that to our two rem. Um, I'm calling it gutter because it's not margin, it's not padding, it's like just that little kiss of extra space that's <laughs> in there. And so it's what we're like, doing is, uh. yeah, <laughs> we're making this flexible so that as we apply container throughout our layout, rather than having to create a whole bunch of utility styles to adjust this spacing, right. we can do it on the fly. 
Um, you oh. could you could still end up creating utility classes, for example. Um, so I come from advertising marketing background. Um, I'm very and I and design systems as well. So I'm very used to the idea of being handed, you know, very precise measurements. Right. Um, we're going to talk about a few ways we want to get away from that today or try to encourage folks to get away from it. This is one of the ways where um, you know, falling back on REM, falling back on CH, these different kinds of more, again, future friendly units that are going to allow our interfaces to be responsive. And um, we're still going to get a really nice, pleasant result at the end, but we're mm-hmm. just trying to identify those opportunities. So, so, yep, you got that there. The last thing we're going to do, just one extra little thing to make our container flexible, is we're going to um, add first a custom property of container dash padding. Container dash padding? Yes. Okay. And we're going to default this to one rem. And so we need to add this as a new property. So just like our margin inline, now we're going to set padding block. Padding block. Mm -hmm. So we're going to set top and bottom. Now, the reason we're not doing all four sides is because our gutter is doing the work of essentially acting like padding because of the way that it's being subtracted from that 100% value. Okay. Yep. Oh, I see. Okay. And then, so should I get rid of the border then? What's that? Should oh, I... yes. Okay. Let's... <laughs> that would be fine to do now. Yep. And if you want, you can flip over and kind of resize nice it and that check looks. that out. <laughs> Ta-da! So there Got it is. Got a gets nice centered. Each. Yeah, looking yep. good. Perfect. Um. Okay. So. The next thing we want to do, if you would please go out to the base repo and over to the final branch, we're going to copy in at this point. Um, so we have nothing. We are truly from scratch, folks in the chat. We are truly from scratch. There's nothing happening here um, that's special or unique beyond what we've already showed you on screen. So what we want to do is go into the SAS file, actually. SAS file. SAS? Mm-hmm. Or directory, excuse me. And we want to copy the reset. And then we can just really, really briefly discuss what's in there. <laughs> okay, so let me make a reset. Yes, sorry. Yep, important first step. So the concept of a reset is to um, uh, add our own defaults to uh, reset the inherited browser ones. And these have super evolved over the years as browsers have evolved. Um, This is a derivative of Andy Bell's modern CSS reset. I have it linked at the top there. Um, I've taken out a bunch of stuff that we're not going to use in this particular demo, but that's the one I like to point folks to. Um, I have a few extra things in here. Um, So just briefly, we'll say, um, you know, we're resetting our box size in a border box. That means that padding and border will not be part of the uh, elements computed size. Um, We're resetting a handful of things to margin zero. So we can manage the spacing our own custom way. And then we are setting our body min height to 100 view heights and some other things. I personally like to also reset, go ahead and reset the base font family here. Mm -hmm. So not too much going on, but it's going to already give us a little bit, um, you know, some nicer things going on. Great. Okay. So I've got it. And then we will... Let's see. And so I can see still... now the the default margin from the yeah. this H1 is now gone. Yeah. And the other thing we can do with that said is if you go to our main style file, we had just had that one rule in there. We can now remove it. Goodbye. Yep. Since we've done that in the reset now. Cool. So the next thing we're going to do before we get into the main meat of the business <laughs> is we're going to add, um, I call it a theme file brand file, whatever you want. We're going to define some colors. Okay. So if you go ahead and create a theme file. And so I am not a designer. I have learned tricks to make my stuff not look terrible, (laughs) but I am not a designer. So I'm going to share one of my favorite ones to create our theme file here. So we're going to, if you want to go ahead and open up a rule for the root property. So the root is an, essentially also means the HTML element. Um, and the reason we're assigning some properties here, as we're going to assign a whole bunch of custom properties, um, is that um, 
we intend to use them globally. So we want them mm -hmm. to be defined at the highest level of our application. Um, and so we are going to build ourselves out a little color system. Let's do we it. We're going to base our color system on HSL, which is hue, saturation, lightness. And I'm calling it theme for a particular reason, which is that the first value we're going to define is our color dash primary dash hue. And we're going to give it a starting hue of 260. What's okay. going to happen is the way we develop the rest of our colors is we can come in here, change the hue and retheme our app in just like that um, with a different color. Sneaky. So, this is a good idea. <laughs> The caveat here, and we'll talk about it more, uh, so my other thing is I definitely try to advocate for accessibility as much as possible um, and throughout my teaching, is that um, that's a really cool feature to have, that it rethemes it. You will then have to make sure that you uh, cut course correct for any contrast that gets lost in that process. Yeah, so you I've gotta, course tested. when you start messing with colors, you got to yeah. check your contrast and all that good stuff. Yes. Um, I should mention, we're not using it today, but I should mention CSS is also getting a color contrast function, <gasps> which means we will be able to upgrade the solution we're implementing today, maybe by next year sometime to, it'll take an array of values and it will choose the one, like if you pass it white and black just as a starting point, it will pick the one that has appropriate contrast. So Excellent. it's coming. Really Excellent. I love it. <laughs> okay, so let's actually do our colors. Um, I'll probably have you, we'll talk about the first one and then I might have you go copy paste to save us some time. Sure, sure. Um, so let's, we've got the hue. Now we're going to define the actual color, initial color for this. So color dash primary. And then HSL. So we can actually pass in that hue as our variable. Yep. And then we just have to define saturation and lightness. You can go all out on this and you can have separate properties for the saturation lightness as well. Mm. Um, I've just essentially locked down this particular example. Uh, we didn't need that complexity here. Sure. So our saturation is going to be 85%. And our um, lightness is going to be 60%. I'm not sure if you can, can you get away with no commas? I think it's a little bit I think you iffy. can, because if we wanted to do opacity, we could do like mm -hmm. that whole thing, right? It's Yeah, I'm not I, sure I if think it's quite cross-browser. CSS, it should work, right? Yeah, P potentially. Do I you didn't want me, test I can, it, so that's I can also I'm put hesitant. them in, so let's, <laughs> let's do it. If you, if you tested it this way, let's do it this way. Yeah, I'm just hesitant. Um, so cool. So uh, if you wanted to really quickly test that, you could go back to our, uh, well, anywhere you could do it right below since we're just testing and assign our color primary um, to change the color of our H1 if you just wanted to test that out super quick. Yep. So the var of color dash primary. Oh. <laughs> uh. Oh, I have to actually include it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let's do it. Yep, exactly. Ta-da! And then if we <laughs> change this to a different thing, and you can immediately see the con the contrast problem. Yes, exactly. So our 220 to 320 is a really safe range for what we're doing today. So like our blues, purpley, dark magenta, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, 260 happens to just be my favorite spot. <laughs> it's a good, yeah, this is a, it's a, that's great. So I will go ahead and have you jump over to our final and, uh, just cause we definitely need to <laughs> we make sure keep we get it on trucking. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so okay, we won't so do the whole file. Just do that top part. Just get the rest of those values. Okay. So we've just filled this out with a color light. Um, and then we've defined our tech a couple shades of gray and our body background. And you can see those are all operating off of our primary hue. It's really nice for grays to give them just a tint of color. It just makes things mm. feel more cohesive. It's not really like super perceptible, except for when it's not done that way. Then you feel right. that like coldness <laughs> to your gray. So that's my designery trick that my non-designer designer trick. <laughs> um, okay, so that's all the colors we need for this particular app, at least as a starting point. So let's okay. do something um let's um 
The last thing that's sort of theme related is if you go to um, back in our 11D files, if you go to our base, um, the includes base, um, I've just added a Google font in there. So that's already been done. So we want to create our typography SAS file. Okay. And we'll just get that assigned out. Um, so we are keeping our SAS organization for anybody that may be a little picky about what we're doing today. Uh, we're keeping it super light. I don't want to get bogged down in organizational details. So um, definitely in a more expansive project, I would you know have subdirectories and, and so forth for some of these things. Yep, go ahead and copy it. That's totally okay. fine. Do you want to talk a little bit about what this is? is? Yes, yeah, we will for sure. So um, is is one of our newer selectors. Um, I forgot to go grab the link, but I have a smashing article covering um, some of our newer selectors. And so we have is and we have um, and we have. <laughs> can't remember uh, what it's see. called. I can find it a little later too. But yeah, so we have is we have where um, and this allows you to pass an array of um, <laughs> I think uh. it's something about selectors. So yeah. Here? Yeah, that one. Okay. Um, it, we get to pass an array and I, I picked it out for our typography, not because it's super useful for exactly what I'm showing it, but just so we could make sure to mention it because it is incredibly useful and um, where it becomes more. So yeah. So it's not offering us any more benefit in this exact example other than, li you know, versus listing them out separately. Mm -hmm. um, where it's more beneficial is when you have more complex selector and nested selectors. Um, and one important thing to note for is, is <laughs> that it has the specificity of the highest spe specific item in the list. So if we had an ID in here, it would mm -hmm. have the specificity of an ID. For the whole set? Yes. Okay. If um, there's a complementary selector of where, and where means zero specificity no matter what until you start combining it with other selectors. So just it's here not because it's super useful in this example, but because I definitely wanted to mention it because it has a lot of use cases I'm excited about. Gotcha. So right yeah. here, it's really so just condensing this, and that's about it. Yep, Great. there you go. So it's applying it. Um, nothing super unique. You can see our block end, which we'll use. We mm -hmm. haven't actually had that on the page yet, but it's coming. Okay. In fact, we are finally ready to make our example much more exciting. Yes. We're going to have to really rip through the rest <laughs> of the, <laughs> the stuff. Um, so if you go back to our base project, you can copy the whole index at this point. Okay. So we're going back to here. We're going to the index.html. And this is markup. So let's see, this is going to be statistics and we've got article cards that are going to have our like various scores. Here are some details. Okay. This all makes sense. So we're basically, this is a reporting dashboard. Yes. Okay. That, that all makes sense to me. Yeah. So let's pop on in here and look at this it's inspired by like the screen time idea that if you're an iOS user that you you get. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So we've just got some, yep. I say HTML in there. <laughs> um, and let's start to give it some of our colors that we've defined. So if you go back to our theme, we are, cause we forgot to do this part. Um, Let's go ahead and copy paste to save some time. If we go to our theme file, what we're going to do is we're going to use those custom properties. Yep. And then the theme and, and don't get the middle bit there. Get the class, the body and the classes at the bottom. Yep. Okay. So we're using our custom properties just to create a few utility styles, right? So I'm a fan of utility styles when it makes sense. Like this is literally repeatable stuff. You want mm -hmm. these backgrounds available. So there we go. We've already got an improvement on our app. Um, okay. So the, I'm scrolling down my notes because <laughs> I got a little out of order there. Um, let's go ahead and we'll really quickly, let's see, did we create a, 
Yes, we have a layout file. Mm -hmm. It's just got our container in it right now. Yeah, and I'm just pointing out here that like oh. these classes, background yes. gray light, and up here we've got uh, background primary, right? So, so there's no there's no magic here. Like what we're doing is is really straightforward stuff. Utility yes. classes, uh, just like you would expect if you were using something like Tailwind. This would be what like BG yeah. colon something something <laughs> like. <laughs> there, and so it's, there's yeah. no real yeah. difference in what's happening, right? It's just we're just using a, a right. theme of our own our own device. Yep, we're being, you know, we're being selective ahead of time, mm -hmm. <laughs> the old-fashioned way. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. So um, now in our layout file, um, we are going to kind of go top down a little bit here. We're going to style our header. Okay. So um, specifically the header container, since we uh, that like avatar in, in H1 is nested in a container element. Yes. So the header container. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm, am I just doing like header container like this? Yep. Okay. Again, more to just not go down the rabbit trail of talking about naming methodologies. So right, we're just going right, to use right. good old selectors today. Um, just all we're doing is a display flex, center align, and a gap of one rim. That's all. Is it a yes, line is item center and a <laughs> yep. uh, gap of how much? Just one rim. Lovely. Okay. So this this I think here is maybe one of my like the most powerful things that I've learned in CSS recently. Uh, it, this has been in for years. The flex properties are not new, um, but the ability to just do this without having to do a bunch of floats and things like I haven't used a float in CSS in years at this point mm -hmm. because of how powerful mm -hmm. these are. Yes. So the next thing we're going to do, if you notice, our little footer there is not at the bottom because we don't mm -hmm. have enough content. So it just so happens that this problem is what prompted me to start ModernCSS.dev in the first place. Okay. Because I had used a technique for absolutely years and it involved just hacks on hacks, right? To make happen. Mm -hmm. And now we can do it so much easier. So uh, on our body. On our body. Um, yep. Let's, we're going to set the whole darn body <laughs> as display grid. Display grid. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. And then we're going to set up grid template rows. Okay. Of auto, of auto, 1FR. Oh, no, no commas for, for template rows. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's Just right. Just spaces. Okay. 1FR and auto. Don't. <laughs> so let's inspect that and see what's happening over in the browser. <laughs> okay, let me uh, let me make this a little bit bigger. So, so we can all see browsers, while you're doing that, all browsers have pretty nice grid tools at this point. Um, you can see. So if you go to your body and click the little grid pill or whatever you want to call it there. Actually click that. Look at it. It reveals your grid. So what's happening is we know that we have three elements at the root of our body. So our header, our main, and our footer. And so we've made rows to correspond with those. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is that one FR is a fractional unit. It's our special, one of the special grid units. And it's basically says um, if, if we used it more than one time, it would divide any remaining space that doesn't have a more exact value between those FRs. Since we only have one, it's basically saying take up absolutely all the extra space mm -hmm. besides what's already used by our header and our footer, which we've set to auto. We set it to auto because auto means those can still grow. Right. Um, we're not putting any limit on them, but it also means to like sh shrink to their boundaries. This is... I actually hadn't seen this uh, this grid button before, and this this alone, oh. like, holy crap, y'all! How useful yes. is that? Um, I I am not a fan of counting grid items, <laughs> and in fact, it kept me away from grid for several years. So right. everything I teach for grid, we almost the, I think can think of one time that I teach something that we have to like really care about numbers on grid. So yeah. if that has been your experience as well, anybody. Um, 
I'm here to give you some other techniques that'll still work for you that <laughs> are awesome with grid. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a good, pretty good starting point. And you know, this is readable, right? We've already got a readable little thing. It could be improved. Absolutely. But it's readable. You know, it's mm -hmm. branded. Mm -hmm. We've got a good start. Okay. So we've pushed our footer to the bottom. The next thing we want to do is, so this is essentially kind of our mobile view, right? If right. you think about it, this is great for mobile. Um, so the next thing we want to do is actually define so we've already set body to grid. We want to use grid then to rearrange our screen um, for a larger viewports. And so um, if you, this is like the one time we're going to use a real media query. <laughs> okay. And again, I'd probably, I might switch this in the future when we have better support. But so at media, um, min width of 100 CH. So we can actually use that handy CH feature for our media queries. Mm -hmm. And then um, on the body, oh, so we would need to add. We're going to right? set grid template areas, and we're going to use. I mentioned we're not going to count any numbers here, so we're going to use named grid template areas. Okay. And so we're going to end up with two rows and two columns. Now, for every every grouping of row values, we put them in quoted strings. And okay. so our first quoted array is going to be header for the first column and main for the second column. So it's just a space between. And then after that ending quote, just a space and open up another quoted array. So no commas anywhere here. And then repeat header and for the first column and then footer for the second column. Oh, cool. interesting. Okay. So I thought I needed to do these differently. So I was like getting ready to, oh. to do some, I was getting ready to do some ASCII art over here. Yep. Not, not this time sometimes, but not this time. <laughs> um, so if you, so the next thing we want to do is we want to actually set up what type of space should those take up. Now, mm -hmm. what I'm showing you is what I believe is the more clear way to understand what's happening. There are other ways that we could be assigning the same thing. And again, that's something that kept me from grid. So I'm trying to introduce the way that I think makes a little more sense and is a little more approachable if mm -hmm. you're just starting to use grid and some of these features. Um, so we want to, we've got our named areas and now we want to assign their spacing rules. So go to grid template columns as our next property. And the first column, oh. <laughs> okay. The first column, which is going to end up containing our header because it's going to be a sidebar, basically. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to use the grid function. Sometimes this is used a different way, but within what? grid, it's a function for fit dash content. Like that. Sorry. The the function's called fit dash content. Oh oh, I got you. I got Sorry. you. I got you. Okay, so fit content like that. Mm-hmm. And we're going to give that a value of 25 CH. 25 so CH. as a function within grid, this is magical because 25 CH basically says that's the maximum you can grow to. But if our content happens to be smaller than that, it will only grow to the space it needs, which is really nice. And then one FR for our second column, which is going to be our like main dashboard area. Okay. And then we need to assign our rows and we're going to, so new property grid template rows. We just have two of those um, in this larger view. We're gonna have one FR, which again will represent the main dashboard area and then auto, which will become the footer area. Okay. So if you save, something interesting is gonna happen I and mean, you'll have to expand out your window to meet our media query. So these are getting assigned just auto placement um, according to DOM order. So it's got us almost there, right? You um, right. hackers, you, you dirty hackers. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to be more specific about it. And so what we're going to do is, so for our header as a new rule within our media query. So header, we're going to give that a grid area of header. And this time there's no quotes, which is a little confusing. Yep. And then same same idea for our footer. Okay. 
and the Dom order takes care of our main <gasps> element. So Look at it go. Go. <laughs> So if you resize it down to mobile, you know, like I said, mobile, we're just like Dom orders fine. No big dun, deal. Dun, dun. Look at this. This is amazing. I mean, this is amazing, right? Like we wrote very little code <laughs> yes. to completely rearrange this, these boxes. And like, I remember trying to do this stuff with other approaches and, and like, I know why a lot of people have this bad taste in their mouth about CSS. And it's because they they learned CSS before these options were there, right? And and now that we have Grid and Flexbox and, and things like this, like a lot of those things that people complain about in CSS, they just don't exist anymore. Like this, exactly. is, this is so <laughs> pleasant to work with. Yes. And if you keep expanding it, we've got container on our main. So we'll still have the rules that we set up. So if you do a widescreen on it. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right you'll eventually hit the point where it, um, oh, you might maybe hit zoom out since yeah, you've got I gotta, I gotta zoom out a little bit to get it to hit. I'm on a very small browser. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you see the the container taking hold then. and, and Yeah, it, it starts to center. We get the, it, you know, this is the maximum size mm -hmm. is about here-ish. And so yeah. it starts to, these are our margins. So it, it's still doing all the stuff. Like this is really, really powerful stuff. Yes. Uh, I come from Bootstrap, like like almost since the beginning of Bootstrap. Right. And I know now, you know, Tailwind's kind of replacement, but same idea. Think of how many utility classes you would do and like pull your hair out over because I've been there to make this happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and maybe not even quite get to do it without also adjusting your DOM. Right. So anyway, I love I love that very much. <laughs> Good template areas are the bomb. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so I definitely like want to get to the cooler, more dramatically visual stuff. Um, so let's let's go ahead. We need to add one little rule. You see how our summary is kind of bumping up um, in there. Mm -hmm. Let's add, I'm trying to remember what that is. So above our media query, we're going to have, so after the first body rule and above the media query, we're going to add a new rule for main and um, we're going to go, yeah, we're going to go ahead and nest it since we are technically have SAS available because we're going to come back and add something in a bit. Um, if you do the direct sibling or direct child selector, so it's going to be a, yep, the carity thing. And then universal selector, so an asterisk um, uh -huh. plus, this, plus This always looks asterisk. like somebody giving you the eye like. Yeah. <laughs> And before we open our rule, we'll do plus another asterisk. So this is saying, so the, what what it's going to attach a rule to is direct children that follow another child. This is uh, what I lovingly have heard referred to as the lobotomized owl selector. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is, a, I think, a Hayden Pickering special. Yes, it is. Um, and the rule we're going to give here, we're going to use our logical properties again. Practice those. We're going to say margin block start. So AKA margin top, we're going to use, we used min earlier. We're going to use max this time okay. to the max function. To the max. Gonna, to the max. We're going to give it the options of for rim and also, uh, so comma. I always forget which is which. Yeah. <laughs> and then eight VH, which stands for view height. So we're just going to tell it to do a little bit of dynamic business, depending on how much space we actually have available. Um, do that in our view do that business css do uh it. <laughs> this is, no this is great this is this is great yes um and just as a compliment because on our wide screen um ah, it's a little snuggly behold, my bucket <laughs> <laughs> it's a little snuggly at the top there for our first headline in there so just within mm -hmm. our um within our media query that we had down there uh, we're just going to bump up the top of main. We don't have a rule for it yet. So just create a rule for main. And we're going to give it a margin block start of 3VH. So I sympathize with anybody. I don't see anybody talking about it today. But usually I get asked, like, how do you talk to designers about this? And my answer is, show them a demo. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's how we get buy off. Um, Did that just work? And I strongly recommend going ahead and experiment with that. Like, I've said it a few times if you're joining us more recently. Um, we're 
trying to create rules that are future friendly and don't care what kind of device you have and what size it is. So that's why we're trying to move towards U height and CH and right, grids, right, right. Take advantage of grid and so forth. Yeah, no pixel perfection here. We're going for we're going no. for something that actually fits the modern use case, which is where I'm dragging my window all over hell and it needs to look good at all of these sizes. Yes. Okay, so we are super running short on time. Um, let's go to, so we're going to create our, so the like main content here is going to end up being like a card type of layout. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and create our card file. We're ready to move on to that. And, or excuse me, I forgot we need to, that's that's okay. We'll obviously leave it there. <laughs> but the first thing is, um, if you would mind going in your browser, because um, I want to make sure folks have a reference for this next trick, because it's my absolute favorite of all the tricks I know. <laughs> Ooh, okay. If you would go to um, my site, small, which is s m o l c s s dot dev, we're gonna copy the first demo that's gonna come up there. So that Here. small responsive grid, mm -hmm. we're going to copy the code for that one. Just the just the guts of it. <laughs> just the guts. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So in our layout file, we're going to create a class for layout-grid. And that can go after our container, the like main container rule. After the just main. Just to keep our utilities together. Layout-grid. Layout mm-hmm. You can pop that rule in there. Okay. And we'll actually let it, we won't make any changes. If you wanna go back to our demo though. Ooh, look at it go. Okay, it so now grid. if I make this smaller, dun, 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 there it goes. It's going, it's doing it. You're doing it, Peter. <laughs> okay, this awesome. is great. Favorite trick of all time. That is really um, useful. When we talk about, you know, we obviously sh already showed there's a still a place for media queries, but it is less, <laughs> mm -hmm. less of a need. So the only change I want to make here is bump up the min um, to 25 CH. So the, the default value for our minimum. Um, we are short on time. Go out to small CSS if you want the more explanation on what is happening here, because sure, we want to get sure. some styles applied to these cards. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so now we're actually ready for our cards. We're going to style the summary cards first. Okay. And so um, let's go to our final. Let's copy and paste a little bit of this. Since we're only down to like 20, 25 minutes or so. We sure are. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go into cards. <laughs> so uh, copy that, like the opening for card through its own styles. So just our essential styles that are ha um, not quite that far. Oh, like here? Um, yeah, just until it opens that second rule. And you can close that off. Yep, so that's just gonna give us our essential, they look like cards now, right? Just some basics, <laughs> yeah, we've got some border radius here, drop mm -hmm. shadow, a little bit of padding, okay. Nothing nothing, uh, nothing, nothing. groundbreaking here, looks good. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, so now, uh, so what each, so that's our generic card class, you can see it's been applied to every element on the page, everything's a card. Mm -hmm. um, Jason, up to you if you want to nest down. I, If I'm in SAS, I like to do the ampersand nesting trick. You can open a new rule if you would like, but we want to do card dash dash stats. Okay, let's so. let's do it like this so that it can be copied out into yep. a non-SAS setup. Perfect, yep, totally fine. Okay, so here's our first bit of magic. We are going to set aspect dash ratio to one. And sorry, chat, normally I would be paying attention, but I want you to see the cool stuff. So Look if there's any questions. Go. Okay, hold up. <laughs> hold up. So we just made that square. Sure did. Now, wait, if I, okay, so what if I want it to be like movie? <laughs> Shut up. Get ah, out. Get out. Behold, my bucket. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Okay, magic. Okay. Magic. So slight dampener. Oh. Once again, our friend Safari is behind, but it's coming in 15, which we all know is like imminently Imminent. going to be dropped. <laughs> the good news is we can put a progressive enhancement on this basically, right? Like ideally it's a square, 
but let's give a sensible fallback. It's not going to hurt, I promise. So under that, um, well, you could, again, nesting or not. So if you don't want to do it under, we can create a new rule. But we're going to do an at supports um, query on this. And we're going to actually do at supports not. So we're going to do a neg, like a reverse on this. And we're going to we're going to neg CSS. Yes, I didn't <laughs> describe that well. So it's actually at supports and then the key and then the additional keyword of not. So before your parentheses. What? Yeah. And and just just the word. So no, not like a selector. Just the word, just the word. Yep. Yep. I've never seen this before. That's magic. OK. And so we also need to define aspect ratio and the value because it's like checking. Oh, um, I understand. So so mm -hmm. we're basically saying, like, if you can't compete, the, compute this. Yes. I got it. OK. And so in this case, just for other folks reference, it's it doesn't matter what for this particular one, it doesn't matter what the value is, but exactly what you said. Can you do anything with this at all? Um, and we're just going to set a height here because the width's taken care of because of our grid. So we're just mm -hmm. going to set a sensible default on our height. We're going to use our max function. And yeah, we could do 25 CH. It's a little small. This takes a little trial and error testing, but 25, or excuse me, VH. So oh, VH. Heights. Got it. Mm -hmm. And then just for my own testing of this, 15 rem was decent for what we're trying to do here. Okay. Cool. So, so this, this will, is not this will make it like you. mostly work. Yes, Firefox, Chrome, Edge, um, the where this is going to kick in and have the most impact currently is iOS, since they all use Safari. We mm -hmm. won't get into that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so cool. We've got cards. We've got our aspect ratio taken care of. Now, um, I think I'm going to have you. Well, okay, never mind. We're gonna so on our primary rule there for card stats. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Let's Continue go going here. We want to set grid template rows or excuse me, display grid first. <laughs> Pro tip, define the display first. <laughs> um, and then grid template rows of one FR and auto. Okay. Now, oh, um, look at it go immediately. Boom. Okay. So one thing I found when I was browser testing this um, and I'm going to be filing a bug for this, is in Edge, this combination where we have an aspect ratio and specifically these kind of relative units mm -hmm. for our rows. So versus like being more explicit in defining something like 65%, mm -hmm. it unfortunately overflows the aspect ratio area. So our, our fix for right now, because I'm pretty sure that's a bug that should not be happening, is to also define both width and height of 100%. So that's just for Edge to make sure it like behaves. <laughs> it applies the aspect ratio just fine, but for some reason, even though it should match Chrome, um, it must be a little behind on on something there. And so if I um, go into, oops, if I go in here, still working. Still working. Good, yep. good. We're happy. Everybody's happy. We are happy. Chat, you happy? Chat's All right, happy. so now I'm going to have you go into the file. It's definitely copy and paste some stuff. Chat's happy. Look at him. Look at him. Chat, you're as happy as me. That's how I'm feeling right now. Okay, let's let's do this. So I have. Uh, I'm okay. So scroll down to the the part where it's defining the DT. So we've set up our. So you can skip all that. Um, we've DT. set up our um, card as a uh, oh. definition list. Stampede. If Ben's still in the chat, you can drop your link for that. Oh man. <laughs> and. So if you copy though, um, actually just copy down to the font size because we're not ready for the last two properties under the DT. So These yeah, ones? the first font size. Yep. Okay. And then I'm put this under card stats, right? Mm hmm. So okay. within our DT, we have a span. And I unfortunately had to like break my ideal semantics here because what we're going to populate into that span, um, we're going to populate a chart using CSS Houdini. And the polyfill was not working when I had it as a pseudo element, unfortunately. Um, 
So as you can see, we've like made space for it. That one FR is making space for it. The auto is applying to that time on apps or whatever the title is. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's really quickly, if you go back to the final copy, the, um, the rule for the DD and the strong. We'll just make sure we'll just make sure those styles are in there. They're not mission critical, but and sorry about the uh, <laughs> nesting. <laughs> no, no worries. Yeah. Get this in there. So that Good. clamp is not going. If you wouldn't mind commenting out the clamp, let's just do it that way because it will uh, have an impact here before we want it to. Okay. Okay. So it's just we're setting the strong in the DD to display block. We're just rather than forcing a line break there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get to the like one of the more exciting parts of this whole thing <laughs> is that span that's in that part has a class of chart. So let's open a rule for the chart. And that's going to be unique. So yeah, it can just sit wherever. And we're using something called CSS Houdini. CSS Houdini, I can put a link in chat, but it lets you write your own. Um, there's a few different flavors of it, but the one we're using today is the Paint API. So it lets you write your own canvas-based functionality to paint extra things within um, or via CSS. Um, and so I've created one. I went, I use this as an excuse for myself to explore Houdini a little bit more. <laughs> So I created one that's going to generate dynamic bar charts. Okay. Now these aren't going to be accessible. They're intended only to be a placeholder. So they're perfect for what we were doing today. If you were to actually develop this app, of course, please use a real charting library popped in here um, so that you have the accessibility features and labels and so forth. Um, so the first step in getting this to be applied is to set the background image. And we use the paint function. So this is unique to like tapping okay. into Houdini. Okay. And I've then, never used this before. I'm very excited. <laughs> in a, what is it called? I can't remember the casing. So lowercase Houdini, but then capped bar charts. <laughs> like that? The, yeah. Yep. Okay. Go ahead and save that little buddy. <gasps> Okay, go okay, to we, our... I, we don't have time to talk about how this works, do nope. we? <laughs> Dang it. Okay. All right. Moving ahead. We'll have to do a whole episode on Houdini because... Yes. What? And I'm not the right person to do it, <laughs> but I can... George, if you're familiar with George Francis, that would be one of the people that would definitely okay. tap for that. Um, okay. So it's a little bit big. We're just going to do kind of a hacker cheater way uh, to reduce it. Um, we're just going to say margin 8%. And that's just going to give it, you know, our, our typical margins around that chart space. Cool. Okay. Works for cool. me. Um, so what we want to do is we can actually, we want these to actually have some dynamic flavor to them. Mm -hmm. And so um, you if you hackers, go back to the final you, file, you, so dirty you can hackers. copy and paste these. <laughs> okay. Uh, so find the rule for chart, which I think is above that one it's nested in there so grab those um grab those yeah custom properties out we were going to progressively build this up but we don't have time for that unfortunately we are out of time y'all okay cool. so this okay. gets us part of the way there you can see the variance in the number of um bars there and this is partly working together we have um set up in our DOM, an inline style where we're passing a unique, uh, we created a separate, if you look on, I don't know what line it is for you, like 36 or something, that chart ID, we're defining that as an inline style in the DOM so that we're forcing a variance of these bar charts, which is cool. So in other words, Houdini can read custom properties so that you can mm -hmm. modify their behavior, which is cool. how they work together CSS. Very cool. Um, okay, so the other awesome thing we want to add is we want to uh, have a little color variance, and we should be able to do this pretty quickly. Okay. We want to, in our main stats rule, we would like to, again, we're going to build this up. We just don't have time, so we're just going to go for the go for the final. We're going to add that chart color property. Okay. 
Yeah. We might have to do one other step. I can't remember. Looks, Let's see. Looks oh, like yes, we, we do. do. Go into the final and we'll need the nth child rules that are happening. Nth child rules. And they're nth are... child rules based on the card stats. Here. Yeah. Okay. So these ones, I don't have time to port over, so we're just going to copy paste them in. And, and you I have one broke extra, everything. one extra semi or one extra curly. I think there I, we go. Yep, that was it. That was it. So you can flip over to your view and just check out how. So what's happening here is it's doing a repeating pattern using nth child, and we have used our main primary color. Mm -hmm. And on one end, we've added 60 to our hue. And on the other end, we've subtracted 60 from the hue. And that's given us a nice, really simple variance in our palette without actually having to create new colors. And it feels nice, right? They go together kind mm -hmm. of automatically. This 60 is, is like yeah. enough to get us enough of a turn on the color wheel, if you will, to hit a new color. That's um, really nice. The last little kind of just nice detail that goes along with that is... Um, up on the main stats rule to grab out the, um, uh, if you want to go to the final one, you can grab this out. Oh, okay. We want to add a little tiny bit of a gradient that also picks up that chart color. Here. Yeah. Ooh. Snazzy. Yes. Um, now, do we I have like five that you, minutes? You just... added all of these, this like, oh, I'm not a designer. I, <laughs> I just have these hacks. I feel like that's what every designer says. Like, this looks great. No, but it is hacks, right? Because we're just <laughs> using the primary hue and we're turning it and that's it. Like, that's a hack. <laughs> call it a hack. Some would, some may call that skill, Stephanie. I don't know. Uh, uh good times. Good times. Okay. So... <laughs> Let's just, just to finish it out, um, let's copy paste in. So that, that weekly score, that's one we called a card highlight. Let's just go grab those styles just so that's, you know, looking finished. Okay. Weekly score was highlight. That's down here somewhere. Here it is. Yep. Da, 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 da. This one, right? Probably. Let's, let's just drop it in here and find out. So if you like go visit this repo later and check it out, um, it's just using our friend Grid again nope. to, um, where did I put oh, this? Outside of the card stats. That outside the... of the card, oops, oh boy. Outside of so the card So it's nested stats. within just the main card rule, but not the card stats rule. Oh, within the card rule, okay. There we go. So just, you know, making it look a little nice. Yeah. Um, we, used a the unique thing in there probably the only thing to point out is the we used clamp on the font size of that percentage so you can see when it hits down below it um shrinks a little bit there you go mm -hmm. we went ahead and used a regular clamp and viewport unit one on that because it is actually viewport relative um with that said we didn't get to our container queries so let's spend the last like three minutes doing that part let's <laughs> do it that was kind of <laughs> something we really wanted to hit yeah, let's do it. Okay, so on our card stats, this is where we're going to have these apply. So within okay, our main so stats rule. Card stats, here we go. There we go. So you can put this um, wherever you'd like as long as it's in that main one. Okay. So the first thing with container queries is we have to actually define which elements we would like to query, so which containers we'd like to query. Um, I have an article on this on smashing meg the i need to update it because the syntax has changed a little bit since i wrote it um so the current and this is in flux again because it's only available in chrome behind a flag because they're literally in the process of writing the spec so it's mm -hmm. out there for people to use experiment with and give feedback on by the way you can give feedback on it on github and i will get that link in the chat before we end today um so to define a container the current syntax is the property name is kent container dash type and there's a few different values but the one we're going to use is inline dash size so you can think of this as watch the width got the it this is what we care about and this is going to be specifically the width of that card stats okay so now based on the size of that container we can affect the 
um, we can make adjustments to the children. And instead of at media, we can use at container. And after that, the syntax currently is pretty similar to media query. They're working on enhancements to it where you could actually query, is the container currently blue? Oh, interesting. Like okay. With. Okay. Um, what we're going to use it for, though, is not to affect uh, layout stuff. We're going to affect the font size of each of these elements. And coincidentally, it was just added as support in Canary. Um, there are now container units. And I'm going to put a link in chat, but um, Ahmad Shadid, who's also a terrific CSS educator, wrote all about them. So similar to like our view width, we would have in this case like QI. So query inline, or actually I'm not sure what the Q is for sure, but I think it's query. Um, and so if you go down to our, um, so like the font sizes we have right now, like our time on apps and those things, mm -hmm. that, that's the data we're looking at is reasonable, right? But it would be cool if it adjusted based on the card size. That's what we're after. Okay. So, yep. If you go ahead and uncomment the clamps that we pasted in earlier, um, for those unfamiliar with clamp, we're giving it basically a minimum value, an ideal value, and that's where we're using our QI. If you're used to fluid typography, that's where we'd usually pop in a VW, view width, mm -hmm. and then setting a max of it or allowed size on it. And you'll need one more to copy paste in there on the DT. We didn't put that one in earlier. So we clamp, our min is... Uh, in this case, one rem. One rem. Our ideal is eight QI. QI. Or query inline units. And our max is 1.25 rem. And then you'll want to go over to browser and play with resizing it. And this and is we'll cool because you can... To, um, yeah, so if you, you it's can a little see bit hard these, to tell. Well, does everybody see these like kind of adjusting in and out as we go here? It's actually probably going to be most visible when we do it this way. So, yeah. so look at these sizes. It's very smooth. <laughs> and then everything gets bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. And it's subtle, but that is... I mean, this is powerful stuff because it, yes. it gives it a sense of space, right? Like you don't get that sparseness where it's big here, but then it feels kind of small when you get to like this size, uh, yes. when it, when it blows up, right? Like if it was the same size here as it is for the three across, it would feel weird. Yes. But they have a sense of weight here that, that is proportional to the size of the container. And that would yes. be really hard to do if this was being done Oh yeah, with like a traditional media query because it, there'd be so many dependent factors that yeah. would cause this to get weird. Exactly. It's so much smoother than trying to orchestrate it as a page level. You could get close. Mm -hmm. um, so we basically just picked ones that work for the ones that don't support container queries yet. And then it's just, again, this is a progressive enhancement. It just makes it that much bit better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> If you want to copy in one stage. more rule that'll pretty much finish up the demo, so at least we can show the full demo really quick. Let's do it. So if you go back to the layout file. Layout. And then within the layout grid rule, there's that scroll snap cards. Scroll snap cards. And again, cards. I don't have time to go in depth on what this is, but we're just going to look at it real quick. Layout grid. Okay, let me go back to layout. And we'll put this down here. Okay, so let's let's look at it. What have I done? Okay, open up DevTools and open up the Device Inspector. Device Inspector. Okay, we have one. You're good. We have one little rule that we need to add to fix this issue. So we've we've set up this scroll snap ID. It's an inherent function in CSS now. Um, mm -hmm. It gives us like a cover flow, if you will, idea or. It'd be similar to doing our former JavaScript hacks for parallax, not parallax, but uh, like hijacking scroll. So we need to we need to fix our overflow. Um, real quickly, go to layout and go to um, that main rule where we did the uh, direct child stuff. Um, Here. Yeah, and then within, uh, yeah, just add overflow hidden. 
don't have quite time to explain why that's going to resolve it, but <laughs> okay, now you can play with it. No, J no JavaScript happening. This is native CSS. Oh, okay. So if I try to pull it to a weird spot, it pulls us to the right card. Yes. Oh, that's very cool. And this feels way less janky than um, what I've done with JavaScript. Yes. Because it's we're not scroll jacking. Like it's it's taking my scroll, and then when I let go, that's when it moves. Instead of trying to do like on the fly evaluation of what's going on, that yes. is. Ooh, that's slick. And there's a lot of caveats here, especially with accessibility. This right here is not a production ready solution. But again, it's one of those very cool native CSS features that replaces a ton of JavaScript. Um, Where was this that I was just looking at and I lost it? It's in, um, in our layout. So it's our scroll snap. Yeah. Okay. Style. So let's let's spend exactly one minute talking about this. <laughs> um, so what we've what we've effectively said is we want to scroll the X axis and mandatory meaning it it forces Grab it, it and take it mm -hmm. and the width of the card oh that's cool and it snaps to the center so the, i mean like i don't know how this works but it's intuitive <laughs> it's enough <working. laughs> you can see like the snap align is center yes it should always stop it's we've got our width set to be the right kind of feel for that um yeah. this is slick this is really nice Okay, I, I apologize. One very last thing. Ten seconds. Go Ten to seconds. our final theme file. We need to copy out our dark mode so we really polish it. Oh yeah, we can't we can't not ship dark <laughs> mode. This is a developer app. My okay. word. <laughs> okay, so we're using the CSS only version. Again, this is not gonna be a complete solution. Ideally, you also offer the user choice on if they actually want to flip your site over to dark mode, right? So important the... caveat to this. Um if you go to our theme file. We go and then we're going to drop it in here so and... we're essentially redefining our custom properties mm -hmm. we're essentially flipping them to a dark mode version and that's all we had to do this took me when i actually was developing this demo it took me like eight minutes and a couple more minutes just to refine a tiny bit yeah because we've been so um careful in selecting our initial values so if i go to light it auto changes with us now Yep. Like that is, oh, that's slick. It's very, very cool stuff. Um, I love it. Done. This is amazing. <laughs> okay. So welcome, New Relic. I see you just raided right <laughs> in time for us to actually head over and raid someone else. So uh, this has been amazing. Steph, where should someone go if they want to learn more about this? I've got a handful of links that we're already going to share. I've got this uh, this modern, modern pseudo class selectors. We've got uh, the the CSS container query units. Anywhere else you want to make sure people check out? Yeah, so um, I'll pop in the GitHub where if you do play with container queries, that's where you can see the current issues and you can give feedback. That's really important right now. Um, if you want to go more in depth than we got to today, if you don't mind me doing a slight promo, Jason, I'm Please doing do. a workshop that starts in just a couple weeks with in partnership with Smashing Conferences. So we'll go into the stuff we talked about today, but actually have time to go deep on it. Um, so uh, hope to see some of you there um, starting October 5th. Um, and then if you are feeling like you want to learn more about these different topics and you you know have an interest in CSS, but you just simply haven't kept up, that's exactly who I've written modern CSS.dev for. So um, would love, love you to check that out. And then I've popped my name in chat a few times this coming Monday, I'm doing my second round of CSS office hours. So you could actually bring questions you have about the demo we had today, if you would like, and I'm doing that on my Twitch. So I would love to see more of you there. Love so it. Steph Dev is who I am in the chat. <laughs> that is awesome. I, I mean, this was so amazing. Uh, chat, let's do a quick, uh, let's do a quick run through of what's been going on today. We've had Amanda with us doing the live captioning that's from white coat captioning thank you so much amanda for hanging out and that's made possible through the support of our sponsors netlify fauna hasura auth zero all putting a little bit of money toward making that live captioning possible because you gotta pay to get that stuff done well um really appreciate that that support that is very 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 helpful um i'm gonna go find us somebody to raid stephanie thank you so much for helping out and hanging out today. I learned a ton. This was an absolute blast. Chat, stay tuned for a raid. We will see you all very soon. Later.
Gracias.